some reaction are exothermic, some reactions are endothermic, and the reason that different reactions are energy releasing or energy absorbing is the fact that breaking a bond uses energy and bond formation releases energy. So if the balance is leftover energy, the system is exothermic. And if the balance is shortage of energy, the system would absorb energy from surrounding for reaction to go. So you end up with an endothermic reaction. And then before we finish the chapter, before we finished asynchronous talk of Thursday, we said we want to consider the energy involved in chemical reactions and the effect they have on the rate of a chemical reaction. And essentially what we said is that if we are starting from reactants and we are going to these products, obviously because the product has less energy than reactant, this is the difference of energy. So reactants are losing energy in this process. So this is an exothermic energy, exothermic reaction. And then we also said, suppose you're hiking two hills, one of them have, has got lower height than the other one. Obviously, if you use the purple pathway, you get to the point of product much faster than you go through green pathway. So we call this height of the energy hill, the difference between energy of reactants and the top of the energy hill, this difference, we call this activation energy. So you see the green pathway has larger activation energy. And we say, the, we said the larger the activation energy, the slower a chemical reaction is. So we're going to study chemical reactions to produce certain products. We wanna make sure to increase the rate. If we increase the rate of reaction, we are making more product in unit of time, so that's more profitable. How do we do that? We should try to find an alternative pathway for chemical reactants, which have lower activation energy rather than higher activation energy. So the higher the activation energy, the slower the chemical reaction is. That's where we were last time. So I'm going to start processes which happen in a chemical reaction. Is it fair to say that if two molecules are trying to make a bond, they must collide. If they don't collide, they don't have a chance of making new bonds and breaking old bonds. So can I say for the chemical reaction to happen, there should be collision the same way that if I compare bond formation between two people, bond of marriage or partnership, this is similar to chemical bonding. If you don't meet somebody, you don't marry them. First, you need to meet. You don't marry everybody that you meet, but if you don't meet them, most likely you can't marry them. So collision is meeting between molecules. That's one factor which is required for a chemical reaction. So if I study what can I do to increase number of collisions per second, that means I can increase amount of product formation in one second. That means the rate can be increased. But going back to the example of marriage, do you marry the first person that you date with? No. You continue dating until you find the right person. Not all collisions in a chemical reaction result to product formation. The collisions which have 
a minimum amount of energy. They must have sufficient amount of energy to be converted to product. Otherwise, there are many collisions which are non-productive. They do not produce product. So what is this energy? Which we call it sufficient energy needed for a collision to be successful. This is the same as activation energy. Another word, if two molecules collide together. Let's go back to that curve that I have. Suppose in the green pathway, two molecules are colliding together. They are moving, they collide together. The energy produced from collision is this much. It's not enough. You need a collision which results to the amount of energy which is equal to activation energy, which means molecules should come this height of the energy. After that, they will go down the hill of energy and they become product. What happens if collision produces this much energy? It's non-productive, this is going to come back down. It's like you're hiking, halfway in the way, you get tired, you come back, you can't make it to the top of the hill. So, number one, collision is needed for formation of product. Number two, the collision must have a minimum amount of energy, which is called activation energy. We call that sufficient energy. Otherwise, the molecules separate, they go back, and they don't make a bond. If there is enough energy equal to activation energy from collision, then molecules are going to make new bonds, and old bonds are going to be broken That means you are making products. I'm going to give you an, an example. Suppose I'm reacting hydrogen with iodine forming 2HI. Can I say, let's say these are iodine, the purple one, I and I. They're bonded together. I and I are bonded together. They're colliding with, let's say the red ones are hydrogen hydrogen and hydrogen bonded together. If they collide and they have enough energy, if their collision is energetic enough, that means both molecules are moving fast enough. When they collide, the energy of collision can overcome repulsive forces, then they will start making new bonds, making these bonds, making these two bonds, and then they start breaking the old bonds to make two molecules of HI. So this the state is very important. The state where we call it transition state. This is the transition state. Where molecules are breaking their old bonds and they are making new bonds. These are called transitional state. So if the energy of collision is high enough to get to the transition state, then you're going to have product. So if I look at exothermic reaction, suppose reactant have got higher, this is the energy of reactant, higher energy than energy of product. Can I say, in going from reactant to product, this much energy is released to the surrounding. So delta H, do you see delta H is negative. The energy of the reactants is reduced to become product. So energy is released to the surrounding. I can say this is an exothermic reaction. Are you with me so far? Do you have any question? It's exothermic heat because there's a lack of heat. Uh, no, it's exothermic because there is a smaller amount of energy. So this is the energy of product, right? And we started from this point 
energy of reactants. Okay, thank you. Sure. You said energy is never destroyed or created. The system is falling down from higher energy level to lower energy. Products have lower energy, so the energy must be given to surrounding. There is loss of energy. We call that exothermic reaction. Good question, Caleb. Thank you. Sure. So most of the chemical reactions, you don't have simple pathway that I showed you here, well, uh, that I showed you here, where reactants are at higher energy and they go directly to lower energy. So I'm going to give you an example. Going, suppose this is reading. And we are going from reading to Eureka, to the coast, Although we are at higher elevation in Reading relative to Eureka, however, you can't put your car in neutral and go from Reading to Eureka. Why? Because there is, the pathway goes through hills. So you have to go up and then at some area, you might be able to put your car in neutral and get to the recovery of Eureka. So in this case, you see Mickey Mouse is trying to take this acorn to the Minnie Mouse. Mickey Mouse must have enough energy to push this up the hill because there is, an, there is a hill in front of initial and final step. Once the acorn is at the top of the hill, Mickey Mouse doesn't need any more energy. With the acorn is going to roll down to Mickey Mouse. So the height of this hill is of course important. The higher the height of the hill, it takes more energy for a Mickey Mouse. It takes more time for Mickey Mouse to push this to the top of the energy hill. So we define in chemical reaction, we call this activation energy. The height, height of the energy diagram. The higher the activation energy, the larger this hill is, the slower reaction is going to be because it needs more energy by Mickey Mouse to get up there. So, is this reaction exothermic or endothermic? All you have to do, compare energy of reactant where we are starting with and where we are ending up. Do you see products have lower energy, energy of products, than higher energy of reactants? That means this reaction has to lose energy. How much energy is lost to surrounding world? Just measure the difference of energy of reactant and energy of product. This much energy is released to the surrounding. So this is heat of reaction. This is the delta H that we are talking about. Delta H is equal to the difference of energy of reactant with energy of product or energy of product minus energy of reactant. This is our delta H. Therefore, therefore because we are starting at higher energy content of reactant, and we are ending up with lower energy of reactant, so energy must be released to the surrounding. Reaction is exothermic. How much is heat of reaction? The difference between energy of products and energy of reactants. This is the heat of reaction. Does this make sense? Any questions? 